everybody, it's Lori with Reiki and Wellness broadcasting from my healing space today for Wellness Wednesday. And today's topic we're going to discuss is um, how to survive the holidays. So um, before we get into that, we're going to do our Reiki level two cleansing techniques, starting with lemon oil. Uh, lemon oil mixed with rose water spray for your energy field. I need a lot of spray today. And then the essential oils I want to use are tangerine and clove oil. So we just douse our hands. Clove oil. So douse your hands and then comb over your energy field. Taking off anything from the day, or the week, or the month, or the season so far. That combination is really strong and powerful. I like it. Don't forget your feet. And just comb over your energy field a little bit more. And again, you can do this um, when you're working on clients. I think it really purifies your energy and um, cleans their energy as you're working on them. So I like to use essential oils when I'm working on clients. And as you can see, you know, if you keep a little bit on your hands and work on their energy field, you're really going to sweep away a lot of, you know, old energy. So it's good for working on clients. And then I like to... Um, Go ahead and open up our chakra system, starting with Shoku Rei symbol. So we want to visualize or draw Shoku Rei and push it into our energy, bring it into our energy, invite it to come in and open your chakra system. Feel that going all the way down through your chakra system, in through your legs, down through your feet, into the earth. And then we want to open up further and call on divine light, divine love, and universal life force energy to continue like opening our chakras. So I always say divine light is doing its perfect work in and through me now. Divine light is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Divine light is doing its perfect work in and through us now. And then I like to see the light coming all the way from the sun, pouring down into my chakras, the soul star, the crown, the third eye, the throat chakra, the heart chakras, the solar plexus, the sacral, the root, down your legs, in through your feet, your feet into the earth. And connect to like inner earth if you can visually with the light. And then now you can kind of connect with your heart space and say divine love is doing its perfect work in and through me now. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through me now. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through us now. And again, you can see divine love coming down through your chakra system. And you are anchoring in divine love to the earth. So bring it all the way down to the earth and into the earth. Then we can kind of see like an energy field coming out of the earth and forming a beautiful, powerful energy field around the earth. And then now we're going to call in universal life force energy and we just see it visually coming down from source light, cleansing and clearing all our chakras and meridian points, bringing balance and harmony to our chakra system. And again, anchor it all the way down into the earth. And then see yourself like forming a beautiful shield of light and love energy around your energy field. 
and create like an egg shape around your entire body, including underneath your feet. Okay. And then we're going to just go ahead and um, hit the sound bowl for a second. that should clear a lot of energy and put us into a good state of mind, right? Um, so today's topic I wanted to discuss is how to survive the holidays. Um, I think, you know, we're all getting into holiday mode if we haven't started already. And it's important that we have some strategies, I think, um, as we step into family events and shopping and all kinds of things that we have to do. Um, and I just kind of wanted to talk about that because I think, I don't know, when you're younger, you might not employ strategies as much as maybe as you get older. As you get older, you kind of realize like certain situations are taxing or uncomfortable or difficult or challenging and that you need some strategies to survive and to make it work for you, right? So, um, and I do think as we get older, things change too. So, you know, years ago, I used to get to go to one person's house every single year and then people passed away and slowly but surely like the whole family dynamic changed and then people started growing their families. And then a lot of us didn't meet at this one house anymore and we started doing our own individual celebrations and just things started to shift and change over time. And then I had to become adaptable even though I really looked forward to doing this one um, type of event every year, right? So just learning to adapt to the changes in the family's dynamics and the family situation or with friends or whatever your situation is, um, is important. And it's important to kind of get ahead of it before you just find yourself in a situation and like walking away feeling a little, you know, thrown off. Um, so I just kind of want to talk about some ideas. Um, boundary setting is a really good thing to start with, like knowing that certain people might trigger you and having some boundaries in place before you get into the situation. That's a really good idea. And it doesn't have to be anything too severe, but just knowing like certain people will trigger you or might trigger you or might try to trigger you and how will you handle that, right? Um, so Simply not hanging out with those people, maybe be somewhere else in the room or sit with other people. That could be a, one strategy. Calling people out right in front of other people isn't usually going to work at a family gathering, um, but sometimes things do come to that, right? <laughs> and we don't want to have to do that. Um, so we want to kind of like maneuver and kind of shift and just not really be in the line of fire or... Um, you know, engaging, right? So at least in my mind, I like to come with a peaceful heart, but I do know like some people will try to ruin that peace, right? So we want to come in with a peaceful heart and a peaceful plan and a plan to maintain peace and harmony. And that includes your own peace though, right? So it doesn't mean you sacrifice your com comfortability in the name of, you know, peace. You ensure that you stay peaceful also and I think that's just like by you know having a plan ahead of time to how you are going to handle things when you get there right so you want to have your own plan and your own um, boundaries in place so sometimes you can just arrive a little bit later and, and leave a little sooner that might help um, like I said sitting with other people and don't kind of engage with certain people who might trigger you um, you know, and I found like over the years, like 
sometimes you think you're getting together with family and that you guys share like what's been going on in your life and whatever. And I, I learned in certain setups in certain situations that they don't really want to know. <laughs> they don't want to hear about it. So I just learned like just keeping the conversation really neutral and uh, maybe even just focusing on them instead of, you know, sharing about what's going on with you. And just that can actually diffuse a lot of things too. So, um, and that took me a few go arounds to get that, but sometimes they don't actually want to know. So the, what you think people should do and what they actually do might be two different things. So just go in and just keep everything really neutral and casual and really not share too much about yourself. That could be another strategy. Um, and then I think just, I, I'll, I also like to bring food or drinks that I know won't um, bother me. So like sometimes you go to an event and there's all these foods that really don't agree with you or drinks that don't agree with you. And so I've learned over time to start bringing my own drinks that I can drink and my own food that I can eat, right? And then if I do that, then I don't feel like disgusting the next day, right? So um, I have some allergies to certain alcohols, so I bring other alcohols that I know I can drink and I can enjoy. And um, certain foods, like, you know, for me at least, heavy foods are really not good for me. So I have to bring something that I know I can eat and enjoy, right? So those are things too, like little things that will help. It'll help you feel better the next day or the next week if you know you have issues, just bring your own stuff that you don't have an issue with, right? Instead of like, you know, thinking they should provide you with what you need. They don't know what you need necessarily, right? So have that handy, have that um, ready. And, and I honestly enjoy the events a lot more if I'm drinking the things that I know I can drink and I, I feel good with. And for me, it's a lot better. So that's another idea. And then, um, I do think there's a lot of grief at the holidays, so knowing if you're feeling extra sensitive and extra vulnerable, that that's going to be rough on you, right? So kind of go into the event knowing you might have to leave a little sooner or that you're just not in a good state of mind and try not to take everything too personally because I think at least every time that I've gone through a lot of grief, I feel extra sensitive, right? And so if anyone says anything to me, it might bother me, right? And it doesn't matter if they have bad intentions or good intentions. It's just whatever they say, I'll take the wrong way because I'm feeling extra raw, right? So when you're feeling extra raw, you just want to kind of be careful that you're not taking things too personally. And, um, and I think that's exactly how it feels when you're grieving is you just feel extra raw and sensitive and something that you might have like taken as a joke at one point you might not take as a joke now, right? So it's important to kind of understand where you are coming from so you don't take what other people say personally. And people are, you know, just trying to... Um, you know, have fun at a party or an event and they're not necessarily thinking or censoring what they're saying. And if they're drinking, then on top of that, they're not censoring it. So you have to understand that if you are grieving, that you're feeling more sensitive and more raw and that you can't take everything personally. And on a typical day, you might not, right? But under these conditions, you, you might feel, you know, more sensitive. So that's important to own that and just say, okay, I can't, I can't take any of this too seriously right now and just kind of give yourself a break um, and cut people slack. You know, they're not necessarily coming after you. They're just, you know, in their own world. And I think a lot of us are in our own worlds and then we interact with other people's worlds and it's really important overall just to not take things too personally when you're interacting with other people and, and their perspectives and their egos and the, the whatevers they have going on and just say, okay, well, that's their perspective, you know, and take a step back from it. So practicing our mindfulness techniques, practicing observation is really good but also not engaging with it and not like attaching your own feelings to whatever happens, right? 
And if people do offend you and are being super arrogant and bothersome to you, then, you know, take a mental note. Like, I don't really like hanging out with that person. Um, but it's just important to kind of like buffer yourself a little bit and just, you know, prepare yourself as much as you can for the situations you're going into. And I think a lot of us during the holidays, you know, we're all mixing together with people that we don't see all the time or we don't have a level of comfortability with. And so we're all kind of like on guard, right? So if everybody's on guard, it's just not going to feel super comfortable for anybody. And um, so you just have to kind of take it all in stride and just say, okay, that was the holidays, they're always a little bit strange or a little uncomfortable, but I'm going to get through it and I'm going to have these things in place or these strategies in place for me so I can get through it and try to enjoy it as much as I can. And then um, the other thing is like, you know, reward yourself after. So if you have to go somewhere that you really don't want to go and it's really uncomfortable and you really don't have a good time doing that. Just try to reward yourself after with something fun and enjoyable for you, right? So if you are doing the thing that you really don't want to do, but you're doing it because it affects other people or it involves other people that you care about, then reward yourself after for doing a good job and showing up and being there and, um, you know, give yourself a treat after maybe not that same day, but maybe in the next week and just say, okay, I did a good job. I, I towed the line. I did what I needed to do and I'm going to reward myself for that. And that would be a nice self-care strategy. So if you do have to do something you really don't want to do or be around people you really don't want to be around, then give yourself a reward for doing that because you're doing it obviously for somebody else most likely and it's okay to reward yourself for being a nice person, right? For doing the right thing. So that's a good idea to reward yourself for any of the difficult things you've had to endure. And then the other thing is like, don't do too much, right? So I think a lot of times during the holidays, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and we overdo, we overgive, we overbake, we overcook, we over buy, we, we're always overdoing it. And I think it's really um, important to learn how to simplify during the holidays and say, okay, I'm going to do this, but not that. I'm going to do bake this many cookies, but not that many cookies. I'm going to go to one event, but not two events. I'm going to, you know, and just start to trim it down a little bit so it's manageable for you. It's important to make everything manageable for you. And if you're overdoing it on any level, you're going to resent it later or you're going to have burnout from it, right? So you want to put, you know, do certain things with boundaries. So say, okay, I'll go to that, but I'm not going to go to this. I'll go to that, but I'm not going to go to this. And just start setting that up. And the more you practice that, the better you get at it, right? And, you know, I feel like people are just like offering a lot of social invitations during this time of year. And personally, I don't like to socialize that much, actually. So I enjoy some socializing, but I don't enjoy like two or three times a week. There's no way I like to socialize that much. Not in that same, um, not in the celebratory sense, like I'll go to breakfast with people or something simple and easy for me, but I don't like to do like big parties all the time. And although I do enjoy them on occasion or, you know, sometimes I don't, that's something I don't enjoy. So getting a bunch of invitations actually stresses me out. It doesn't make me feel good and relaxed. So, um, you know, I've just had to learn to manage what I want to do and try to trim out what I don't want to do, right? And just be more selective with what I say yes to and what I commit to. And then that helps me out. That makes me a nicer person. Because if I get too overloaded and overwhelmed, then I get crabby, right? So I really, <laughs> I don't want to be crabby and I don't want to inflict that on other people. So I've learned that I have boundaries with certain things and the more, more is just more, it's not better for me, right? So more is just more, sometimes less is more for me, right? So that's just how I am. Some people are more social, more active and they 
feel like there's not enough going on. And um, so I can't relate to those people, but I'm just saying like if, if you're overdoing it and you're feeling overwhelmed, just kind of scale it back and be more selective and just do it, for, you know, with a good heart and hopefully not offending anybody, but people do get offended too. And you can't help that, but um, just say, hey, you know, I'm really busy this week. I can't make that, but I would love to see you for breakfast or coffee later or in the new year when things calm down a little bit. And just kind of like offload it to another time when it's not so busy. And I think that'll do it for today. I hope you guys do have a wonderful holiday season. We will close out with some balance and some unity with our Reiki symbols. So let's go ahead and invite Say Hey Key in for balance. Feel that coming through your energy system. And then the Om symbol for unity because we do want people to feel unified during the holidays and again bringing all your energy back to you and not feeling spread too thin is important bringing that through your energy field and then we'll close out with the sample joining me for wellness Wednesday I appreciate all your support and um, that you're watching these videos and I do wish you a very happy holiday season and we'll talk soon take care